guys know, bring me that phone because I don't know what you're doing. I'm going to bed. You don't need to be on it. You got to get up in the morning still to go to school. Exactly. Give me the phone. Shut it down. Right. You had your time to do whatever you needed to do. Talk to your friends. So I think what happened is the structure has left the homes. I don't think that, like, I think we're just passing off these devices to these kids to get them out of our way, out of our faces. And I mean, they come As the fact of a babysitter, like, here, play a game. Yeah, it's like they're- <laughs> Watch they're a YouTube the video. <laughs> it really is the babysitter now where, you know, of course we probably had TV and you kind of scoot up there, but we had educational shows. We was watching Channel 12. We knew all about Rating Rainbow and all the educational- Sesame um, Street, the electric oh, company Sesame back Street. way back in the day, you know, yeah. Yeah, other stuff was a bonus at night. Just if you got to watch Happy Days or something, you know, or the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. So those was uh, perks. If you did what you were supposed to do, you got a chance to as watch. As long as you ain't getting in trouble. Time. Yep, the Jeffersons and stuff before you had to go to bed. And on Saturday, yep. we treat the uh-huh. eight men and some of the two two sevens. Yeah. So yeah, oh yeah, that's so, all the good stuff right there. That was the good stuff. That's what TV was absolutely good and you didn't mind watching this stuff with your family it was good family shows it wasn't right. all this ratchet reality tv going on um so that's when i felt like life was good you know the the children today they have no idea of half the things that we were exposed to they got to watch it now on tv land but those that are you know get a chance to see some of those old shows right and i i hear some teenagers say they have binge watched um you know the Cosby show or a different world or, you know, they, they've seen some of the old shows and they're oh, like, those are great shows though. Shows. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so it is, yeah, the generation now is, is we just have to get them back. Like, listen, we got to structure them out because we're even now we have become device like, Ooh, okay. We can't even go to a restaurant without doing on our phones. So yeah, that's true. Just Everybody's just kind of like, yeah, and uh, got yeah, as bad as they have. So it's now I know I try to force myself if I go out, I'll try to force myself to put my phone down or put it in my bag. Right. But if you're with friends, you're with friends. Y'all should be mingling and talking and, and enjoying. I imagine each other. that. You know, I was reading this article. This is uh, this is back when I was still doing like a lot of restaurant work and. Um, Anyway, there was um, there was one particular restaurant, and they couldn't. You know, they were trying to figure out how come um, the the their table turns were increasing um, time wise, so they weren't able to get the same amount of people through on like a regular basis. And so it just so happened uh, that um, you know somebody found some old video footage uh, from an old, I guess, surveillance system or whatever. And so they went through and start watching these tapes, and you know these tapes are like like twenty years or you know, like twenty years old or something like that. And you know what the one main difference was? People weren't carrying cell phones back then. So people would come in, they would eat, they'd interact, everything else. Now it's completely different. People are in there, they're on their phones. Oh, let's take some selfies. Let's take pictures of the food. Blah 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 blah. So yeah, it's just uh, you know it's just different. It's just, it's just a different approach to, I guess, how people are interacting with the technology these days. It definitely is a turn. Um, one day I found myself just observing. Um, I think I was out to dinner. Um, yeah, I was out to dinner, and I just happened to look around. And you know how many heads I've seen just like... Them? <laughs> it was like a whole table of people, and I think every last one of them had their heads... And I was just like, wow, we really got to do better. And it's these people. It's like, are they people. praying or are they, are they on the no, phones? What's like, going on here? <laughs> it was it's the craziest thing because I, I really looked around and I was like, wow, we are really like just on our phones. We're out to dinner. I'm looking at couples. I'm looking at like, it's, it, you'll find a few needle in the haystack that are actually engaging with one another. Right. But okay. the majority of us. checking timelines, checking, you know, feeds, making, I mean, I'm guilty of it. And then when I catch myself, like I said, I'll try to put it down unless it served me a purpose or if I was catching footage, but otherwise I'll, I'll try to catch myself and be like, 
So, um, okay. but yeah. Yeah. The cool, technology. Cool. I'm sure people probably have to now, restaurants will probably now say, hey, no cell phones. If, if, if you're still sitting at the table and you're on your phone, please. <laughs> Listen, right, we exactly. Love you today. Like, <laughs> We're trying to stay in business. You're taking too long, you know, posting on Twitter or Facebook right. or whatever. Like, if you're not buying more drinks and food, we need you to exit. Like, y'all sitting here at the table on your phones and y'all not even, the, the bill been paid and now we just sitting here on our phones. So I can get how their the time ratio has changed over the years with restaurants, um, the longer wait times. Because that, that's the first thing people do is, like, can I take your order? Like, can you put that down so I can get your order? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, put, you you want to put that down? I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> like, so it, it's crazy. I remember when I was working at the, the hair salon and my um, owner, when cell phones was really, really taken off, and he happened to notice the staff being you know us grabbing our phones or whatever answering a call um i would kind of answer a call and be like i'll call you back i'm with a client um but he observed that a lot of the staff and clients were starting to be glued to their phone this is early on right so he mm -hmm. had a meeting with us and he was like look it looks so unprofessional looking at the the camera footage with not only my staff but also with the customers and he was like i feel like First of all, staff, I'm going to address y'all. I don't want to see y'all on the phone. If it's an emergency, excuse yourself from your client. Take the call. Come back as, as quick as you can. He was like, for your clients, I need y'all to introduce how to tell them to get off of their phones while you're servicing them. Because I don't need another client coming back to me asking for a redo. And you were trying to talk to them, but you let them talk on the phone the whole time while they're, you're doing their hair. And they're holding conversations and now they don't like how their hair is because they stayed on the phone the whole time they were in your chair as he right. observed. Okay. So as he observed in not just us as a staff, but observing our clients in our chairs. So I, I was like, you know what, if I can't be on my phone, my clients can't be on their phone either. And not that I ever really did it like did it, but um, still I understood where he came from. So after that, any client that got in my chair and they wanted to talk on the phone, I would say, excuse me, can you please, um, if it's not a business call or an emergency, can you please get off the phone? I had one lady try to pop fly like, what? What I need to get off the phone for? Well, first of all, I'm doing your hair. There's questions I need to ask you about your hair. And if you're on right. the phone, I can't ask you these questions to find out what it is you want, need, and how you want your hair. So I was like, it's just out of a common courtesy. And I don't want to hear your conversation. I said the same way you wouldn't want to hear, hear mine. I don't want to hear yours. But if right. you need some time for this call, I'll take this next person while you, 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 you know, you can hear Take care of what you got to take care of. Right. Yeah, take care of what you got to take care of. And don't you know, she put that phone down and was like, so then as I kept introducing it more and more to my clients, and it was always that one combative client. She would always test me and get up there in my chair after I would shampoo her. She would go right there on her phone and I would walk up to my station and I would get like start to kind of start prepping her hair. And I realized right, uh -huh. this is the first thing she do on a slouch. I That pulls on our back when pay, when customers slouch in a chair. We need you sitting up straight. Right. And OK. Yeah, you, that makes you, sense. You're relaxed like you're home. You're not home. I need you to sit up straight. I want you to be relaxed, but I need you to sit up straight while I'm doing your hair because that pulls my back. So I was like, you need a minute? And I walked away. Don't you know she came back to the chair who well, she was like, I'm off the phone now. Can you finish? I was like, okay. I was like, like you know, we had this conversation. So why would right. you? You, you tested me and she was like, well, I need to get out of here. Well, if you got to get out of here, I need you to get off this phone so I can make sure that when I'm done, you're cool with your hair and you ain't still glued to the phone. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How much I owe you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then be surprised when you see the price. Like, no, come on now. So they, I, once I implemented that, uh, a lot of my clients respected. And even if I had to answer my phone, excuse me, off the phone, even when I'm home, if I'm doing here at home, let me get this real quick. I might talk for a split second. What's going on? If it's something important, 
sorry for for the inconvenience. I'm always apologizing for the inconvenience. And they're like, girl, right, you're fine. Okay. You're in the house. You know, if they were like, you're fine. You're in the house. No, because it's still, you still paying me for a service. So, no, I want to still give you right. the same courtesy. I don't care whether we're in a salon or in the house. You're paying me for a service. So, okay. Yeah, so I am very, I'm, I'm a stickler about that. And I think a lot of us as um, stylists need to implement that professionalism between us and our customers because those wires get crossed. And these, the, then you get that customer that be like, I don't, I, but you was on the phone the whole time. I couldn't ask right. you anything. <laughs> and now you tell me you don't like your hair because you didn't want to get off the phone. And every time I tried to talk to you, you it looked like I was bugging you. So Interesting. My, um, okay. But yeah, I like that approach, like, though. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. My coworkers, when I implemented it, they were like, you really be telling them to get off the phone? Yes, I do. And they get off the phone. <laughs> because you want respect. I want respect. You want your hair done properly. And let's come on. Let's be professional about it. I'm so, I feel like people have gotten away from professionalism with these devices. And... I just had a terrible experience with Frontier Airline Boo, and, and they were so unprofessional. They even took away their call center. So, 